Ladies and gentlemen, Nuffield Scholars, good afternoon, just. I'd like to start by thanking the Nuffield Family Scholarships Trust, the McRobert Trust, my family and my employer, John Forreston family, for providing me with the means to carry out this scholarship. So my background and passion is in managing large numbers of cows in high yielding systems. My current role is as a manager on a 1500 cow dairy in South West Scotland. Having carried out similar roles in the US and the Middle East, one issue continually comes out on top, labour, specifically attracting and managing large teams of milking staff. So this was a simple non-scientific exercise I came across at World Dairy Expo last year. The picture is a bit grainy, but basically farmers were asked to put a marble in the jar that represented their current top concern in dairy farming. Coming out on top was labour even trumping input costs at a time of rampant inflation. This correlates well with what we see in our own business, where labour availability is often more of a threat to sustainability than milk price. As the UK continues to consolidate the same number of cows into fewer larger herds, this issue of attracting labour is going to become greater. The graph here shows how the number of 1,000 cow plus herds in England is continuing to increase year on year. Dairies like our own that have built themselves up off the back of Eastern European labour are finding that this is no longer an option in a post-Brexit United Kingdom. Therefore, I was keen to find out whether robots and robotics could play a part for the larger producer. Robots are already very common in smaller family farms, but until now, their uptake in a larger setting has been limited. So the countries I decided to visit were the USA and Canada, Chile, Argentina and Brazil, and back in Europe, the Netherlands and Germany. All countries either at the forefront of large-scale dairying or leaders in robotic technology. From these travels, I've came up with three key points and conclusions that I'll now go through in detail. So the number one reason for installing milking robots is as a labour saver. But do they actually save any labour? You often hear that the labour is simply repurposed for other roles around the farm. And that certainly appears to be the case on smaller family farms. However, on larger dairies, there is definitely a labour saving, as the labour that is being saved is pure milking labour. An example of this is Long's Peak Dairy in Colorado. They've got numerous dairies, but their new 4,200 cow, 64 robot unit was operating with a 40% reduction in labour when compared to their other facilities of comparable size. From a health and welfare standpoint, there are two main benefits to box stall robots. An increase in milk yield and a reduction in replacement rate. An increase in milk yield post-robot installation of anywhere between 3 and 10% can be seen, but this is entirely dependent on the system that the cows are moving from. For example, cows coming from a three times a day power system in great facilities would see a minimal response, whereas cows coming from a twice a day system in poorer facilities would see a far greater response. The reduction in replacement rate can be attributed to a reduction in slips, trips and falls and other injuries associated with being herded to a milking power three times a day. A conservative estimate puts this reduction, replacement rate reduction at between 3 and 5%. One of the most interesting things for me that came out of the scholarship was the vast array of different layouts and systems that people were utilising with box stall robots. The two most common were free access and guided traffic. So free access is exactly what it says on the tin. The cow decides if and when she visits the milking robot with no restrictions put in place. Guided traffic uses the presence and removal of certain inputs at certain times to guide the cow around the barn. After milking, she gains access to feed, but not to a bed or water. To gain access to these, she must go through a non-return gate, which takes away the presence of feed. To get back round to the food, she has to go through a pre-selection gate, which either sends her back to the milking robot, or if she doesn't currently have milking permission, will send her straight back to the feed. Free access is promoted by people who put the cow's freedom to choose highly on their, on their list of wants. However, guided traffic systems have a number of benefit for benefits for large-scale dairies. My first observation was that guided traffic systems have a lower rate of fetch cows than free access systems. These are cows that have to be manually brought up to the robot having gone an extended period of time without recording a milking visit. In a guided traffic system, late lactation or stale cows or animals that are reluctant to visit the milking robot would have little choice as they still require access to feed. My second observation was that guided traffic systems generally run a lower rate of in-robot pellet usage. 
in a free access system, the only thing moving that cow from the cubicle to the robot is the desire to be milked and the desire to be fed. Therefore, these systems have to drive pellet usage in order to encourage that cow to come and get milked. There are numerous issues with this. Firstly, pelletized feed is expensive. Secondly, it makes balancing the rest of the ration more difficult. And finally, there is an argument that this slug feeding of concentrate can result in ruminal acidosis. My third observation regards systems was that guided traffic systems generally run a higher number of cows per robot, around 65 compared to 55. However, they have a lower number of milkings per cow, around 2.6 compared to 3.1. The philosophy here appears to be to push milking visits in the first 100 days of lactation and allow late lactation and stale cows to taper off their milking visits, increasing the milking interval out to around 18 hours if necessary. There was no difference in milk yield per cow per day. However, the guided traffic system had a higher yield per robot per day. I was certainly sold on guided traffic systems being the way ahead for larger dairies. One reason that often gets cited to me as putting farmers off purchasing box stall robots is their rate of depreciation. Farmers are also reluctant to put this extra debt on their balance sheet. However, at least one manufacturer is now offering lease finance options where the debt remains with them and the farmer simply pays a monthly fee for the robot. I can see this greatly increasing their attractiveness, especially to the larger producer. Longevity of milking robots is another thing that is often surprising to farmers. An example of this is Homestead Dairies in Indiana. They're currently operating 48 box stall robots and they're in their 11th year of operation with no plans to swap them out as of this time. This sort of longevity, however, is directly correlated to an effective repair and maintenance schedule. An advantage that the larger producer has is they have the scale to be able to employ somebody in-house to take control of this repair and maintenance. One thing that all the top operators had in common was cleanliness. And I'll draw your attention to some of the slides here. The robot rooms were almost surgically clean at all times, and I'm convinced that this led to increased longevity and reliability. Key to this was bringing staff on board at the time of installation and teaching them that ultimately this attention to detail would make their lives easier in the long run. So when I set out my Nuffield scholarship journey, I planned to look at all types of robotics involved in dairying. However, I quickly realised that the box stall versus milking power debate was where I should be focusing most of my time. Here are some thoughts though on some other bits of technology seen in my travels. So fully robotic rotary powers appear to have had their day. Development is stalled, they're price prohibitive and still require a labour unit in the parlour assisting with occasional attachment. A far more common option is to utilise a conventional rotary parlour with a pre and post spray dipping arm and still have that one labour unit in the parlour. Another option that's gaining traction is batch milking, where cows are herded to a group of milking robots all located in one location. Manure collecting robots um, are difficult to financially justify on a large scale. Their inability to handle sand laden manu manure and the number required make automatic scrapers or a flood wash system a far more viable option. Feed pushing robots are of a similar vein, however the latest generation coming out of Canada are said to be able to handle the feed for up to 3,000 cows in one hour. So after all that, my conclusions are really threefold. Firstly, Robots are viable on a large dairy due to an increase in milk yield, a reduction in um, replacement rate, and an a reduction in staffing costs. Secondly, guided traffic systems appear to be the most um, efficient for a large scale dairy. And finally, maintenance and cleanliness are key. Ultimately, robots are becoming more and more common and farmers really need to be looking now at how they're going to integrate them into their systems, even if they don't plan on utilizing them initially. A caveat to this, however, is that if labour availability continues on its current trajectory, then farmers may be forced to utilise them far earlier than they would like. This is certainly something we are acutely aware of in our own business and continue to monitor with great interest. Thank you.